Hey everybody, welcome to the Did You Know podcast live show. This is Andrew McCauley, episode number 91. Wow, well, 91 episodes we've been doing over a period of a number of years. Yeah. 91. Yep. 91. Hey, that's good. We're, uh, we're creeping up on triple digits. 91. You know what? I think uh, today's show, we're going to do a little bit of a different tack today. We're just going to talk about some stuff that's working and what's not working. Yeah. And um, one thing I know that's that's been working, I was going to sort of straight out of the gate talking about doing episodes 91. One thing we haven't done as much as we should have, which is working and we should be doing this more, is consistency, right? I know when we do things, when I do things consistently, whether it's a blog post, whether it's social media posts, whether it's podcasting, video, live feeds, you name it, um, consistency I've found has been, is works really well. So you know, I think that's a sort of a good segue into what today is all about is what is working, what is working right now and how can we make that happen for our business because, you know, so many things have changed and they're going to change again massively just in the next few weeks and that's just life, not just online stuff these days, but it's just right. life. Yeah. Um, so what's going to work? What's working out there? What's going on? Um, I've just ranted the whole time. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh you know what? We're doing some interesting things right now. I think the number one thing that's working well right now for us, and uh, by the way, we focus specifically on lead generation. Yep. Uh, so we don't really do uh, very much. We have some legacy clients that do e-commerce, but you know, it's not something we're doing. We're really just helping businesses create leads. Um, Google My Business is mm -hmm. continuing to just dominate. Uh, and... Uh, we're seeing more leads from Google My Business than we are from organic, uh, yeah. which hurts me as an SEO guy. It hurts to say that, um, but 100% true. Um, we're seeing a lot of leads being generated from the three pack, which is the map thing on the site, specifically from mobile devices mm -hmm. of people that are never visiting the client's website. Really? So, so let me ask a question about the, that whole thing is how long the, these days, if someone wanted to get, get going with Google, my business, how long does it take for that to be verified? Cause I know in the past it could have taken two, four, six, eight weeks for Google to send out a postcard. Um, is that still the case? Is it still taking that long? And what, what do people need to think about when they're trying to make sure that their listing is up to date? Yep. Not taking that long. Um, Google's pretty good about sending those postcards out right away. And within seven days, you should have that postcard. Right. Um, they're really not doing the phone verification anymore. So you, you pretty much are pigeonholed into waiting for that postcard to come, which means mm -hmm. you have to have a valid address. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, I'd say a week at the most. I think the bigger issue around GMB posts are... Um, Somebody claimed your listing seven years ago yep. and you have no idea who that person is or what email address they're at, if that email address even exists anymore. Mm -hmm. And we're getting clients now, like we just got a, a lawn care client and he has no idea uh, how to claim his listing, who has it. It's been claimed. Mm. Um, so there is a bit of a process that's going to take longer than just re requesting the postcard because we don't yeah. even have access to it right now. Yep. Now you touched on, you know, being an SEO guy and doing organic, uh, organic posting and that sort of stuff. Um, Google My Business has some feature now where you can put some content on there, some posts yep. on there. How is that working and why is that different than, you know, posts and stuff like that? Yep. So we are currently um, having, uh, we have a social media person that, that does a Google My Business post twice a month to our clients. And quite honestly, it could be even more often. Um, but those posts show up when somebody is searching for something near me. Uh, mm -hmm. So in this, we'll just use the same example, lawn care services near me. Uh, your, your profile could show up along with some recent posts. It could be an event that you're doing, could be a special uh, summer heat wave special, right? right. Or could it could be uh, it could just be a blog post or something that you've written recently. Uh, but that just kind of separates you from the other guys on the on the thing because you've got some uh, active things going on with your post and they're relevant, they're recent. Mm. Uh, it can only help. Now, can you use 
is there a duplicate content issue? If you've got a blog post on your on your website, can you use that piece of content for your Google post? Yep. Or is there a problem there? Yep, no problem there. Uh, that's exactly what we do. Um, anytime we we publish a new piece of content, up it goes onto the GMB. Uh, a lot of times it's uh, maybe a teaser. Maybe it's only the first first paragraph or two with a link back to the full blog. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason we do that is for some more retargeting related issues, right? We can pixel the person at that point, some other things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, no no duplicate content issues. And uh, can does it... Uh when you're posting that, I haven't done much of this at all, and I and I've been thinking about doing it for a while, but I just haven't dug into it. Uh, but now that, now they're talking to you, I'm like, yeah, this is a really pretty cool idea that we can offer. Um, how do you SEO that post, or is it just the natural content that you've got in there that's SEO'd? Yeah, pretty much, it's just copy and paste from your blog post. Yep. yep. Um, okay. No reason to SEO it really. Um, a lot of the SEO is done on other things related to your GMB profile, yes. uh, your, your company description, your the right categories, all of those kind of things. Uh, but it's working great. Another thing that we're doing is um, we're getting a second phone number. Mm -hmm. from, we use CallRail. We get a second phone number. That phone number goes in as the primary phone number on your GMB listing. And then your real phone number goes as an additional phone number mm -hmm. that keeps your nap, your name, address, phone number consistent. But that first phone number is what everybody's going to call. Mm -hmm. And then you can track those leads that, you know, cause somebody might type in lawn care near me. You might pop up in that three pack. They might click call you straight from there, never visit your website. And, and you need to be able to uh, count that lead, you know, sure. where it came sure. from. So uh, that is working really well. Also. So you're saying, you're saying that your your original phone number is still used on other platforms, but you're using a call while trackable number on your GMB uh, listing, but your main phone number is a secondary listing. So it still looks like it's uh, the NAP is consistent across the board. Yes. Yes. Your real phone number still stays on there, but as a secondary number. I love it. Now, you know what I love, what I love about what I'm hearing you say is that tracking – it's super important, you know, and, and we're, we're, we're doing the same thing. Tracking is everything to us because, you know, we're, we're dealing with business owners who are absolutely sick and tired of spending money on crappy ass marketing companies. And let's face it, there's a bunch of them out there <laughs> who are getting paid to do not much, right? <laughs> getting paid to do a post. You know, we put some posts up on Facebook or we did a Twitter post or what, whatever. I mean, no one is tracking the results. No one's being held accountable. And yeah. these crappy ass marketing companies are giving good companies like ours and yours a bad name because they're all tarred with the same brush. And um, we're very big on tracking everything we do. Whatever it is, we want to, when we start with a client, we draw a line in the sand. Yep. And we say, here is what you've been getting. Here is where you're at. And in a month, two months, six months down the track, Here's where we are, so we can show them the growth that's been happening. And at that point, because you know, it's it's not a subjective decision if they want to continue with us uh, with us or not. It's actually a data driven decision to say, you know what? Yes, I can see you guys have gone got us from here to here, which is what we wanted. That's great. Well, there is no conversation whether we keep going or not because it it makes sense to keep going. Yeah, you know. So I love it that you're tracking with Call Rail. Um, I think uh, I think that's a lot. A lot of people need to do that, especially people who are using, heaven forbid, uh, traditional media to to uh, attract the right clients. Um, yep. But I think that's very important uh, when what you're doing. So I love GMB. Uh, Google my Google my business listings. Um, it can be a bit of a pain, especially when you got a, an owner who doesn't know who did it, who who authorized it, who claimed it. Um, it's a bit of a work, as you said, but hey, it's part of the deal. Yeah. Yeah. CallRail also integrates with analytics. So you can set up a goal in analytics as a phone call. Uh, oh, really? So you can okay. actually pull up analytics and see how many conversions you have across multiple platforms. So how many phone calls we got, how many people filled out a form, you know, how many people came to the website. Yeah. We're the same way tracking. So at, at the end of, let's say six months, like you said, you can show the business owner, you're putting a dollar in and three dollars are coming out. Yep. So now the conversation is how many dollars do you want to put in, right? It's just how yeah. busy do you want to be? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And I think I love I love that I love that that specific uh, example because 
it's all about numbers, right? Numbers and dollars. And if you can, if you're putting in dollars, you know, I've got examples left, right, and center of clients who are spending, you know, five hundred dollars a month on social media. Okay, well, what are you getting for that? Oh, yeah. I don't know. And how long have you been doing this for? Oh, probably two years with the same company. You've just spent five hundred dollars a month times two years, and you've you've spent twelve grand. And what results have you got? Absolutely un untraceable. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, the the number, the tracking system is it's it makes it hard for them to fi to fire us, right? As agency yeah. owners, yes. Uh, it, and it's it's just incredible. Um, so you know, it's it's well worth it. And if you're not getting all of that tracking information, uh, then you there's a good chance that you're with a an agency that is uh, not on the up and up, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, um, so that's good. So that's working for you. Um, you're doing still doing SEO stuff, or is that as not as important as what's going on? Oh, it's hundred percent important. Yeah. Um, again, it depends on the industry. Uh, if we look at the hierarchy of how leads are coming in for our clients, mm -hmm. GMB is at the top, uh, and then organic is right underneath there. Not much of a, a second place, and then paid ads, which is you know quite a quite a big area that could be Google ads, YouTube, uh, Facebook. Yeah. You know, and then we start considering that you can now run ads in the GMB listings, right? So you can actually get a fourth listing show up maybe two times in the three pack, which becomes the four pack. So uh, that fuels that part of it as well. So well, let me, I'm, this sounds like it's a GMB special today, but I want to ask you a quick question about, um, what is the preferred, I think it's called preferred or spon not sponsored. If you're a local business uh, and you've paid for, and I'm trying to remember the term now, uh, guarantee, I think it is Google guarantee. Have you had much experience, experience with a Google guarantee? Do you know what that is? You know what? I heard about that a couple of years ago, and I think it's a pro program you have to sign up for to get yeah. into. You have to sign up, and I think you might have to be spending some money on Google ads to be part of the Google guarantee. Yep. But what I was doing was giving a different search look when you're like, let's say I'm looking for lawn care near me and they, and your, your guys have been paying for it up the top was a different, almost like a completed section that was yeah. different than everything else. And it really stood out, but I don't know. I'd, I'd like to know the results of that. Yeah. Before. Those are uh service service area ads or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's a whole different thing. And it's, only available for specific industries right now. Yeah, plumbing. Um, so, I think is one of them. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's a great way to to get more uh, views. It just depends on the industry that you're in, yep. whether you can even yep. get into those or not. Mm -hmm. Now, I have seen in the last week or two in the wild uh, something that again we're, we're stuck on GMB. Uh, part of what runs the the potential of you getting in that three pack is how many reviews you have, right? Yeah. That's a big part of it is getting mm. reviews. I've seen some ads recently that say number one roofing contractor in St. Louis inside the GMB listing for that particular client. So there's this kind of like a fourth line with a green and it says number two uh, house. Oh, really? So this is Google putting this up, not this, not the company themselves telling it's you this. Google doing it. And it goes back to how many reviews I've seen this a couple times in the wild. Really? Wow. Boy, that's, that's going to really push the review game. Uh, now, if we knew someone who could help with reviews, we'd all be there. <laughs> well, we've got a review system and it's not why I brought it up, but, <laughs> the, but the review, oh, no, bring it up. Let's be a shame. <laughs> let's, let's, you know, let's talk about it. That's okay, reviews.redcanoemedia.com. There you go. The system. Uh, we are we implement this for every one of our clients because reviews are huge. Massive, massive. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And not having them, which is a lot of the clients that call call us that even ones that have been paying for SEO or paying for digital marketing come to us with three paltry reviews with a 4.2 average star rating. You know, oh my gosh, yeah. this is this is all hands on deck. We got to get you some reviews right away. So. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yes. Well, that's, that's interesting. I want to just touch on what, what I'm, what we're doing too, as far as working, we've already sort of touched on it, but that's a lot of organic, organic um, SEO and organic content. That's uh, and I, you know, I've been talking about this. You have been talking about this for years and years and years. Um, but we're, our, our main focus right now 
and although and and you know maybe I'm, I'm going to start looking at GMB a lot a lot closer again now they've got some local businesses but uh, creating content that Google wants creating content that people want to find the answers for and um, if you know we we talk about having content creating content we've got we had a couple of clients that created content every single week or every we had a radio show that created a new uh, piece of content every week since 2011 and they got 30 visits every three months from their from their content it was terrible terrible right another guy was a church who created content every week or every day actually uh, but the problem was that it wasn't content that people were looking for the actual substance of the content wasn't too bad but the the structure of how he named it and, and the and the meta detail the metadata and that sort of stuff um was very bad it wasn't it was very jargonistic or it was very stuff that was centered and around his own head rather than what people were searching for so we went we re-engineered those posts went back and retitled them and make sure that the content was what people were looking for and all of a sudden instantly we've 10x their traffic in just a couple of months you know going from going from uh what they had to you know, three or four hundred visits now, and that's this is not a lot, but it's now content that's going to keep delivering them results forever. You know, yep. we've all ex- examples of content that uh, was done in 2015, 2016, and still delivering visits to our website. The, the the thing I like about content, as opposed to doing Facebook posts and all that sort of stuff, is that it's an asset. It's something that's going to keep working for you forever as long yeah. as it's relevant to people searching for it. Um, and that's our big focus now is getting, making sure that the content we're creating for our clients is content that people are looking for and, and it's going to last for a long time. Being in, in this space where you and I are, social media stuff, it can be very uh, up and down. You know, we do an article on Blab, all of a sudden Blab closes down and we're, and we're, out, of, we're out of business, right? So we've got to be mindful of that. A lot of the businesses we're working with are very evergreen plumbers and all that sort of stuff. So they can stay the distance um, and ride out that changing course all the time. So the content we're creating is being good. So um, then what I, what I want to add to that is then by just adding a little bit of fuel to that fire, content is good organically. But when you throw a little bit of money behind it in an ad format, and it doesn't have to be much money, but just to get that ball rolling, to get that that initial spark going, all of a sudden, that's the impetus for the growth and the continuation of that of that content. I did a post the other day um, uh, on one of my sites, and within 40 minutes, I was in the top 10 in Google out of 3 billion search results yep. for, that, for that key term. It didn't take long. It didn't take long. I just All I did was delivered what Google wanted. And yeah. what they wanted was a specific answer to a question. I did a post on that, uh, SEO'd it properly, which didn't have, doesn't take a lot. When you've got WordPress websites with SEO plugins, you follow the cut and paste options. I'm not an SEO guru by any means like you, uh, but it's not hard. So I think the other part that is being consistent, I spoke about this at the start, now I'm being consistent about delivering content. Uh, Google knows that I'm coming up with new content all the time. Yeah. They know that the site is fresh, ready, fresh, Unique and relevant to what they're looking for, and uh, that's what that's what's giving us um, results too. So marry that with what you're doing, Google Google My Business, you'd be blowing it out of the water. Yeah, I think there's yeah there's three things you said there: consistency. Yep. We had a client who would publish a blog every Monday and Thursday, and he he had it up to 18 minutes. Within 18 minutes of publishing, Google knew it was coming. Wow. They were, they were indexed, right? Wow. You know, so I mean, well. It, Consistency is huge. Mm-hmm. Relevancy, obviously huge. Don't write about stuff people don't care about, you know. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and both of those talk to keyword research, really. Yeah. Using some sort of tool to find out what people are actually typing in yep. so that you can format content around that. And I, I had a coaching call this morning with a guy who uh, is trying to do his own SEO. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's cool. It's great. Uh, But he, uh, he kind of thought that it was one keyword per um, page. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I pulled up, uh, I use Ahrefs. I pulled up this tool. There's other ones out there and showed him that his homepage alone was ranking for 218 different keywords. Wow. So while you might start to write for a specific keyword, uh, I have a great post on this about writing for the topic. 
and not mm -hmm. for the keyword. Yes. Right for the topic because Google understands they've got something called the knowledge graph. They understand that uh, if you're writing about spaghetti, they expect the word meatball. They expect the word mozzarella. They expect oh, the word fork. Yep. Yep. You know, they understand how these words work together. So yeah. um, there's, there's huge potential out there. And the other thing I like about what you said about writing really good content is you can always expand on it. Mm -hmm. You can always make it better. You can revisit it a year later. And I've had great luck with that. Revisiting right. a post so a year right. later, adding to it yep. and uh, updating the, the published date on it. Yep. And Google sees, I mean, it resurges and, and you can be right back in the, in the top of the rankings pretty and, easily. Uh, I, I, used, uh, I used an old post that was doing okay for me. It was doing pretty well. And I thought, well, if there's people liking this, I'm going to plus it up. So I spiced it up uh, in March this year and it blew it out of the water. I was, yeah. in, I was crazy. And this is an original post from 2016 or 17, getting me a lot of traffic. Now it's, you know, I've, I have five X to my traffic since March and it's predominantly from this one post. Wow. So, uh, it's crazy. Um, and you know, everything's looking, everything's going up in the right direction just because I looked at what it was, what was working, what wasn't working. I got rid of a lot of crap from my website, by the way, I cleaned yep. up. I, yep. uh, you know, I'm doing a little bit of gardening in this COVID time. And what I'm learning about gardening is sometimes you've got to clip the trees a bit to make it grow. Yeah, yeah. Same with websites, right? I went through and I had uh, posts from now, this website I've had since 2009. So it's, it's been the seasoned website. But there was stuff out there that was talking about products and programs that don't exist anymore. Yeah. You know, um, Flippergram and all this stuff. Like, what the hell's Flippergram? <laughs> back, back in 2013, it was something, right? So I went back and I'm like, well, who needs this? Nobody needs this. So I started cutting and pruning. And so now the content I've got is the stuff that I want it to grow and I'm trimming the, the crappy little branches off the side. That's awesome. You're doing two things at the same time. Yeah. You know, boosting up that content that that does have potential, uh, pruning the other stuff. A lot of times, you know, people will come and say, I'm out of ideas to write about. You know, well, that's a perfect time to go back and find blog post that had a nice jump yep. in when you published it. And then they just kind of been tapering off, uh, yep. redo that content and you'll be right back on top. Well, of you know, it's funny you say that. I'm, I've got a client about to, as soon as I get off this call, I'm about to go through, uh, cause I've got to deliver some more content ideas cause we film them. We get them to film content, uh, as well as writing articles about it. But, um, I'm getting to a point where I'm like, hey, I think I'm almost flushed out of ideas, but I'm about to go back pre when they used us. And there's yep. a whole bunch of content they got there. I'm just going to go and replus it. Yep. Make, make awesome. it better, pump, pump it up a bit. And then that's going to give us some more impetus to uh, keep going. Yep. You and I have talked about answer the public before answer the public.com. Yes. That's another yep. great place yep. to put in some generic overview keyword and it'll give you an incredible amount of things to write about. <laughs> yep. Yep. Totally. Totally. Well, I think we've blown this uh, this session out of the water. I know, I know we've gone. I think we've gone nearly thirty minutes already. Almost on this. On this uh, but we get to we can talk about this all day, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> we love it. We love it. Um, uh, anything else you want to add that's uh, working? I mean, Google My Business, as we said, and uh, consistent content, consistently good content that people are looking for that Google is looking to deliver. Uh, yeah. it, just do those two things and you don't need to worry about all the other crap that's out there. Uh, you know, it's that whole Pareto principle, 80, 20 rule, 20%, 80% uh, of your results are going to come from 20% of what you do. And if you can stick to making that stuff work, then you're going to find you get some pretty cool, good results. Yeah. You'll be golden for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, where can people find out more about uh, our podcast and all the information they need to do to subscribe? Everything you need to know is at redcanoemedia.com slash digino. That's D-I-G-I-K-N-O-W. We would love it if you would leave us a review. Five stars would be great. Uh, but just getting those reviews on any of the platforms, Stitcher, iTunes, uh, any of those would be great. iHeartRadio, uh, that would really help us uh, get the word out to more business owners like yourself. Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, Redcanoemedia.com is where I can find out more about you, the social media bloke. You can come and check me out, check out what's going on with my posting and come see the posts that I'm doing. Check it out. Model them. Copy them. No, don't copy them. Model them. Yeah. <laughs> um, check out Will's post too because he's got some awesome posts. I uh, get flagged every time he sends a new post out and I secretly read him, secretly read them so he doesn't know I'm checking him out. 
Oh, good. You're, yeah, using cognito mode so nobody knows. That's great. Yeah. Oh, I opted in with another name. My name's Mary <laughs> something. And you'll never know who I am. Yeah. And you know what? That's always a compliment when your competitors start signing up for your newsletter. Oh, I'm um, not a competitor. Not, I'm not even close. Don't you not that we're competitors, but I have seen that lately <laughs> where some competitors are signing up and I'm like, oh, I know who that is. Okay. <laughs> it is almost it's like a trophy. It's like, ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> I got one of these, got one of these email addresses. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right, man. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, everybody. Gotta... Take care. See you next week. Bye. All right. See ya.